why don't you turn water into wine to prove that you're Jesus? <laughs> well, I feel this is just as illogical and unreasonable <laughs> as the previous question, actually, in terms of why I didn't, you know, speak Aramaic. Firstly, um, it presumes that in the first century I did turn water into wine, which I did not. So it, it also presumes that turning water into wine would be a loving thing to do, which it is not. <laughs> In fact, it would be far better to turn wine into water from a, from a health perspective than it would be to turn water into wine. And, uh, in fact, I have no aversion to turning wine into water, but I would have a lot of aversion to turning water into wine. It, it, again, it's one of these things that never happened in the first century that I'm often asked to perform in order to prove something. If I could do it, the only thing it logically proves is that I can turn water into wine. That's all it proves. It doesn't prove anything else. It doesn't prove that my identity is Jesus. It only proves that I can turn water into wine. So to me, the whole it's pointless to even attempt such a thing. Why would I want to attempt turning water into wine when I know that wine contains alcohol? Alcohol destroys brain cells, and so therefore it's unloving for me to imbibe or encourage anybody else to imbibe. Unfortunately, also, alcohol encourages overcloaking by spirits, because there are dark spirits in the spirit world who don't get to drink alcohol in the spirit world and all they want to do is overcloak somebody on earth so they can drink alcohol through them. And this is why we have so many people who are drunk on earth who are standing up and can't even remember who they are anymore because they're completely overcloaked by another person. Now, do I want to encourage all of that behaviour? No, I don't. I will never want to, actually. So I will never turn water into wine, ever. That's the reality. I might turn wine into water, I don't know about that. But to be honest with you, I can turn wine into water with a Bunsen burner and a few you know, pieces of stainless steel, you know. So, um, so that can all be done quite easily as well, <laughs> doing, it, doing it the other way. So I feel, again, this uh, question is really based around the Bible and the Bible, the presumption that the Bible is speaking the truth about my life in the first century, which it is not. It's also this presumption that uh, I should do things in order to prove myself, which if I was loving, I would not do. I would only do it if I was narcissistic and self-involved and egotistical, and I'm not going to do those things because I'm not any of those things. So um, I feel again that uh, this question of proving myself because of the, a miracle, uh, in this case, turning water into wine, is really a very, very flawed logical proposition and it contains, no, um, like, and it contains nothing real about it in terms of what is the reality of what I'm teaching or any of those kind of things. What is the truth of God? What is the truth of the universe? These are all just questions that people ask, thinking that they're stumping me in some way um, and thinking that somehow they're going to convince me that I'm not the person that I know I am. <laughs> And which is never going to happen, actually, mm. because I know who I am. So. so when you said it's illogical, mm -hmm. um, do you mean by that that if you could turn water into wine, it wouldn't necessarily pr prove anything? Or It doesn't right? prove anything other than that I can turn water into wine. It doesn't prove that I'm Jesus. And it also, is the, it also contains the presumption that I turned water into wine in the first century, which I didn't do. It also contains the presumption that turning water into wine would be a loving act, which it is not. So none of those things. It presumes a lot of things, all of which are incorrect. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and obviously, if I'm going to do something unloving, I can't engage God's laws, as I've mentioned before in another question. The reality is God's laws can only be engaged under certain conditions. And if I am choosing to engage God's laws for self-aggrandisement, in some way, so you know, to make myself appear better than others in some way, or in order to damage another person, of which this particular thing would do both, mm -hmm. and then I would be completely out of harmony with love and therefore unable to complete the task anyway. So I feel a lot of it comes from these deep misunderstandings people have about God's laws. They don't understand that all of God's laws are loving and all of God's laws involve love. In order to engage them, they must involve love. No so-called miracle, and remember I said in previous question that I don't believe there's any such thing as a miracle. No so-called miracle, or what I would call 
no engaging of a higher law of God that people on earth don't know about can be done without love being involved. So love is essential part of any one of these laws being engaged. And bearing in mind that turning water into line would not be a loving act on a number of levels, it would be impossible to achieve, in my opinion, without there being some kind of dark influence being involved. And even then, I doubt whether it's possible to achieve. From a purely scientific perspective, water does not contain the same ingredients that wine contains. Water is water, H2O. They, it contains a simple amount of elements, two elements. Wine contains many, sometimes hundreds of elements in, in it that would have to be gathered from somewhere in order to, be, to convert water into wine. So from a scientific point of view, converting water into wine would have to go through a process in order for it to occur. So you're saying there's no magic tricks. There's always got to be a science that underlies the science, miracle, science the so-called miracle. Everything. Every yeah. miracle, that's, so-called miracle that's ever been performed, there is a scientific explanation for. That's reality. And I find it quite funny in some ways that I'm asked by atheists to turn water into wine into, in, and my not doing so proves to them that I'm not Jesus. They don't even believe in Jesus. They don't even believe Jesus existed. They don't believe in the Bible. So therefore they don't believe that Jesus ever turned water into wine because they don't believe in the Bible. And yet I'm up being asked to perform some fictitious thing that they know is not possible scientifically. Well, I know it's not possible scientifically too. Like, I'm not stupid. <laughs> so so I, I am constantly amazed at the lack of logic, even in these so-called atheists, asking me to perform a miracle that is scientifically not possible to achieve without gathering other elements other than water together in some manner. And, and it proves nothing aside from that I could do it, even if I could do it. It doesn't prove that I'm Jesus. It doesn't prove my identity. So, again, I feel it's a very flawed argument very flawed questions that I'm frequently asked by people in the media and other people who believe themselves to be clear thinkers. And they call themselves sceptics, but I, I, can't, I don't even think they're sceptics because a sceptic is a logical person, a person who actually looks at something from a logical perspective and then is sceptical only because of logic, not because of their emotions. And these kind of people obviously are not clear, clearly thinking logically, so therefore they're being driven by their emotions. They're being driven by their emotion to prove that there is no such thing as, you know, God's truth. You know, they're, they want to prove that there's no spirit world. And as I've said, in the future, they'll find out that they're wrong. And, and in fact, they'll realise that they were quite silly making these presumptions that they had no evidence to support. So I have uh, no evidence myself to support the fact that water can be turned into wine. I don't know if it can be done at this point in time. I believe that for it to be done, the elements which involve grapes and other things <laughs> other than just water, the elements would have to be present. Now, there may be a way that I can do that in a very rapid way in the future, engaging some laws. I don't know. There might be a way that humankind can do it in some way after they engage God's laws. I don't know those laws that are involved in that particular process at this point in time. However, I'm pretty sure and I know for certain that I did not know them in the first century and so therefore never turned water into wine in the first century. And I don't believe that, uh, that anybody who thinks I did is actually thinking very logically either because I would not do something that's unloving. Great. Now, if you're talking about dehalkalized wine, well, that's a different matter altogether. <laughs> I might consider that because <laughs> obviously alcohol destroys the brain cells in particular, it has a detrimental effect generally on our body and, uh, and my belief is that uh, the only reason why it seems to have a good effect on people's bodies is because they're full of stress and they need to release some stress. So I feel that I would never engage that particular process of turning water into wine uh, that's alcohol. Mm -hmm.